the Sophia of Jesus Christ. The Sophia Wisdom of Jesus Christ. After he rose from the dead, his twelve disciples and seven women continued to be his followers, and went to Galilee onto the mountain called Divination and Joy. When they gathered together and were perplexed about the underlying reality of the universe and the plan, and the holy providence, and the power of the authorities, and about everything the Savior is doing with them in the secret of the holy plan, the Savior appeared, not in his previous form, but in the invisible spirit. And his likeness resembles a great angel of light. But his resemblance I must not describe. No mortal flesh could endure it, but only pure, perfect flesh, like that which he taught us about on the mountain called of the olives in Galilee. And he said peace be to you, my peace I give you. And they all marveled and were afraid. The Savior laughed and said to them, What are you thinking about? Are you perplexed? What are you searching for? Philip said for the underlying reality of the universe and the plan. The Savior said to them I want you to know that all men are born on earth from the foundation of the world until now, being dust, while they have inquired about God, who he is and what he is like, have not found him. Now the wisest among them have speculated from the ordering of the world and its movement. But their speculation has not reached the truth. For it is said that the ordering is directed in three ways, by all the philosophers, and hence they do not agree. For some of them say about the world that it is directed by itself. Others, that it is providence that directs it. Others, that it is fate. But it is none of these. Again, of the three voices I have just mentioned, none is close to the truth, and they are from man. But I, who came from infinite light, I am here, for I know him light, that I might speak to you about the precise nature of the truth. For whatever is from itself is a polluted life. It is self-made. Providence has no wisdom in it. And fate does not discern. But to you it is given to know. And whoever is worthy of knowledge will receive it, whoever has not been begotten by the sowing of unclean rubbing but by first who was sent, for he is an immortal in the midst of mortal man. Matthew said to him Lord, no one can find the truth except through you. Therefore teach us the truth. The Savior said he who is is ineffable. No principle knew him, no authority, no subjection nor any creature from the foundation of the world until now, except he alone, and anyone to whom he wants to make revelation through him who is from first light. From now on, I am the great Savior. For he is immortal and eternal. Now he is eternal, having no birth. For everyone who has birth will perish. He is unbegotten, having no beginning. For everyone who has a beginning has an end. Since no one rules over him, he has no name. For whoever has a name is the creation of another. He is unamiable. He has no human form. For whoever has human form is the creation of another. And he has a semblance of his own, not like what you have seen and received, but a strange semblance that surpasses all things and is better than the universe. It looks to every side and sees itself from itself. Since it is infinite, he is ever incomprehensible. He is imperishable and has no likeness to anything. He is unchanging good. He is faultless. He is eternal. He is blessed. While he is not known, he ever knows himself. He is immeasurable. He is untraceable. He is perfect, having no defect. He is imperishability blessed. He is called Father of the Universe. Philip said Lord, how, then, did he appear to the perfect ones? The perfect Savior said to him before anything is visible of those that are visible, the majesty and the authority are in him, since he embraces the whole of the totalities, while nothing embraces him for he is all mind. And he is thought and considering and reflecting and rationality and power. They all are equal powers. They are the sources of the totalities. And their whole race from first to last was in his foreknowledge, that of the infinite, unbegotten Father. Thomas said to him Lord, Savior, why did these come to be, and why were these revealed? The perfect Savior said I came from the infinite that I might tell you all things. Spirit who eyes was the beggar who had the power of a beggar and a form giver as nature, that the great wealth that was hidden in him might be revealed. Because of his mercy and his love, he wished to bring forth fruit by himself, that he might not enjoy his goodness alone, but that other spirits of the unwavering generation might bring forth body and fruit, glory and honor, in imperishableness and his infinite grace, that his treasure might be revealed by self-begotten God, the Father of every imperishableness and those that came to be afterward. But they had not yet come to visibility. Now a great difference exists among the imperishables. He called out, saying, Whoever has ears to hear about the infinities, 
let him hear, and I have addressed those who are awake. Still he continued and said everything that came from the perishable will perish, since it came from the perishable. But whatever came from imperishableness does not perish but becomes imperishable. So, many men went astray because they had not known this difference and they died. Mary said to him Lord, then how will we know that? The perfect Savior said come you from invisible things to the end of those that are visible, and the very emanation of thought will reveal to you how faith in those things that are not visible was found in those that are visible, those that belong to unbegotten Father. Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. The Lord of the universe is not called Father, but Forefather, the beginning of those that will appear, but he the Lord is the beginningless Forefather. Seeing himself within himself in a mirror, he appeared resembling himself, but his likeness appeared as divine self father, and as confronter over the confronted ones, first existent unbegotten father. He is indeed of equal age with the light that is before him, but he is not equal to him in power. And afterward was revealed a whole multitude of confronting, self-begotten ones, equal in age and power, being in glory and without number, whose race is called the generation over whom there is no kingdom from the one in whom you yourselves have appeared from these men. And that whole multitude over which there is no kingdom is called sons of unbegotten Father, God, Savior, Son of God, whose likeness is with you. Now he is the unknowable, who is full of ever imperishable glory and ineffable joy. They all are at rest in him, ever rejoicing in ineffable joy and his unchanging glory and measureless jubilation. This was never heard or known among all the eons and their worlds until now. Matthew said to him Lord, Savior, how was man revealed? The perfect Savior said I want you to know that he who appeared before the universe in infinity, self-grown, self-constructed Father, being full of shining light and ineffable, in the beginning, when he decided to have his likeness become a great power, immediately the principle or beginning of that light appeared as immortal androgynous man, that through that immortal androgynous man they might attain their salvation and awake from forgetfulness through the interpreter who was set, who is with you until the end of the poverty of the robbers. And his consort is the great Sophia who from the first was destined in him for union by self-begotten Father, from immortal man, who appeared as first in divinity and kingdom, for the Father, who is called man, self-Father, revealed this. And he created the great Ian, whose name is Ogboad, for his own majesty. He was given great authority, and he ruled over the creation of poverty. He created gods and angels, and archangels, myriads without number for retinue, from that light and the trimal spirit, which is that of Sophia, his consort. For from this, God originated divinity and kingdom. Therefore he was called God of gods and King of kings. First man has his unique mind, within, and thought, just as he is it thought, and considering, reflecting, rationality, power. All the attributes that exist are perfect and immortal. In respect to imperishableness, they are indeed equal. But in respect to power, they are different, like the difference between father and son, and son and thought, and the thought and the remainder. As I said earlier, among the things that were created, the monad is first. And after everything, all that was revealed appeared from his power. And from what was created, all that was fashioned appeared. From what was fashioned appeared what was formed. From what was formed, what was named. Thus came the difference among the unbegotten ones from beginning to end. Then Bartholomew said to him, How is it that he was designated in the gospel man and son of man? To which of them, then, is this son related? The Holy One said to him I want you to know that first man is called Begetter, self-perfected mind. He reflected with great Sophia, his consort, and revealed his first begotten, androgynous son. His male name is designated first Begetter, son of God, his female name, first Begetter Sophia, mother of the universe. 